Hey everyone, it's Emily and welcome to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. Today I am really excited to share with you how I built my brand new greenhouse. And I'm not talking the greenhouse turned garden shed. Totally new greenhouse and I did it in about a week, which I'm really excited and proud of. I got delayed by the rain, but besides that, it went pretty smoothly. All I used was black paint, two by four, some metal roofing and clear plastic um, polycarbonate roof panels. So you can do a mixture of whatever you like, but I found that using the metal um, on the base with the clear plastic roofing saved me a little bit of money, which was really nice. But my inspiration for this beautiful kind of DIY modern greenhouse look was the really pretty black metal ones that you see with the glass in them. They are gorgeous. I want one, but they cost a lot of money. So I was able to build this one for a fraction of the cost. I think it looks pretty darn close and I'm just so proud of it. But this is great because you can actually customize this to your needs. You can change the uh, size of it. You can tailor it to whatever you want. And the best part is, is that depending on how you orient it on your land you'll be able to add on to it and also maybe even add a shed to the back of it which I think is pretty cool so my plan is to hopefully next year if lumber prices come down <laughs> let's hope I'm gonna add on probably another 10 feet so my greenhouse is 12 by 20 right now and I did 10 foot sections um, but you can do 8 foot sections 6 foot sections whatever you need to do you can do it so I hope you enjoyed this DIY greenhouse build hopefully you find it helpful and with that let's go ahead and get into it the supply list will be in the description box below this video. Tap the right hand arrow here and it will take you to it. So I ended up moving my strawberries and all my raspberries and we had um, this leveled out and it kind of slopes down and we had gravel put down. I was originally going to plant straight in the ground, but then we needed a good base for it. So had gravel delivered, tampered it all in. We, um, I would have a nice solid area to work on. So the first thing I decided to do, actually before we started clearing the area for this, was to build the walls. And again, I'm using all two by fours for this. I bought eight foot lengths, and then for the base here that I'm marking, I bought a treated board in 10 foot, and then the top will actually be just a regular fur board. So I chose to do the treated because this is going to be on the ground so that way it won't rot for me. Um, you can do what your preference is, but anything touching the ground, I decided to do treated. You can, for this part, use a nailer if you wanted to. I just like to use screws, especially if you mess up, they're easy to take out. Nails are not so easy to take out, at least for me they aren't. So I'm using my speed square to keep everything nice and square. I marked everything at two feet. So every stud is 24 inches across. And so I built four of those, those were my walls. And then for the front and back end, this is what I'm building here. And it's pretty straightforward. This is all gonna depend on the width you're gonna do. Mine is 12 feet wide. So I ended up doing four foot sections in a sense. The walls are gonna create the extra few inches on each side. So the doorway, I had planned on doing double doors, changed my mind on that. So I did four foot in the middle and then each side is around 43 inches, if I recall correctly. So the outer boards are eight feet tall. And then the inner boards, the one I'm screwing into right now, the really tall ones, those are 10 foot boards. So I did that because those are gonna actually be um, holding up the, um, the ridge support and everything. So you'll see that as we go. So one thing I made a mistake on here that I would do differently is instead of doing three boards across because I was planning on not having a board where the uh, doorway was, is I would just do one solid board on the very bottom helps keep things square as well. So you don't have to do this extra part. So this is actually where the ridge support is going to be sitting on. Um, so this is my doorway height. And I ended up making all my walls seven and a half feet tall, not eight feet. So they were cut at 91 inches, I believe, is what I did that. So now that you can kind of see that come together, I ended up, I had to get it square. So I put a board on the very bottom to help square that up. And you're gonna wanna take your measuring tape and go diagonal with it both directions and you should get the same measurement. Mine ended up being 146 and a half, I believe. So it just took me a while to get it square because I couldn't figure out, I thought I had everything squared up. You know, that's why I did all the individual boards and stuff well sometimes things get a little bit crooked on there you know what I'm saying so here for this this is actually for the metal that I'll be adding to the base of mine so this isn't actually necessary unless you're doing the metal so keep that in mind um, 
but I am putting that up around 18 inches because that's the height of my metal. I'm going to be splitting my metal in half. We'll get to that later. Right now I am working on making my trusses. I made sure that my ridge support, which is in the middle here, is centered. And then I'm trying to get a guide and a feel for how this is supposed to be. So one side fit perfectly, the other side was off by an inch. So I wasn't squared up somewhere. And so I took a few things out, readjusted a few things. And I also for my ridge support, um, I, instead of just using the two by four horizontal, I'd made them vertical and I did two together. You could use a four by four for this, but I was trying to just use two by fours to keep it very simple. On your supply list, you're going to see that I added a few extra boards in case you make a mistake. You might make a mistake and that's okay. It's normal. Um, I made a few, if you miss cut something, you can't glue it back together. So for at least for this project. So for trusses, I ended up cutting the top area that hits the ridge point at 35 degree angle. And um, hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, you can watch how other people make trusses if you need to. Um, you can pre-make yours. Um, if you want to, I ended up, everything should be cut the same. And I thought, well, I'll just make one side longer. That ain't going to work. You want it to be all square. Really? Um, do you see how I put that horizontal piece down there? That is so that I would be able to put these up without anybody helping me. So that is going to be on the ridge support. So see how this is up. Those are both cut at 35 degree angles. This is supporting the ridge, which is right here in the middle, it's just a little mock up here. And so that's what I did to make sure that uh, everything fit snug and worked good. So here is the area. Um, we kind of marked out with some stakes, the general 12 by 20 foot area that we were going here. And then I used a long level and a board to make sure I was completely level. I had to adjust a few things, add a little bit of gravel, kind of compact it in and stuff. But for the most part, we got it pretty good because we had it laser leveled. So just had to adjust a few. Now, if you don't want your greenhouse or your shed to sit directly on the ground, you could use pillars, the center block pillars for that. You could uh, cement the boards in the ground. I decided not to do that for this project. If you saw my last one, you know I did that. Um, I wanted to do a simpler route for this and make it as easy as possible. So that is what I ended up doing for this. So got the first wall up and um, now I'm adding some side support so it'll hold itself up while we bring these side walls in. So again, you're going to need a few extra boards for the bracing and everything. And then it started to rain again. So I ended up putting you all in the shed and it worked out really well. So um, we are adding the first wall in and then we're making sure that's level. Um, and then I screwed that together, um, the front wall to the side wall, and then we put up the second wall and we made sure that was completely square. So we diagonal with our uh, measuring tapes across each way so everything was squared up and then we added our other walls so you can see me screwing these all in together you can use nails if you want to but I like screws it's just easier for me and it's stronger in my opinion but do what is best for you and your um, project It decided to rain pretty good, so I decided to take this time to paint all my boards um, black. You can use whatever color you want, but I wanted that a little bit more of a modern look and everything. So while those were drying, it stopped raining, so we ended up putting up the ridge support here. Um, it's, it's nice if you have some help to do that. Um, so we ended up putting that up and then used clamps for it, and then after I made the middle ridge, I can't find the footage. I filmed it, but I couldn't find it. So I'm sorry about that. I liked the way it looked, um, having kind of like a V or a W shape there. So I decided to add that here. I am using six inch screws. They're massive screws. And I'm using that to secure the ridge in from the bottom and also to the top. Um, but in the ridge I should have mentioned is a two by six. So that's the only thing that is not a two by four, but again, you'll see the supply list. So it should make sense. And something else I should mention is that I ended up doing my pitch at a seven twelve. 
So um, I want it to be nice and strong and that way the snow would just fall right off of it. You can do a, a lower um, pitch if you wanted to, um, depending on the area that you live and you need to build through the, your Pacific area. I tried to push through the rain the best I could. It got super windy, as you can see. I was just kind of going for it. I was determined to get this project done and everything. So I got everything cut and I was really happy with that. The next day, it decided to dry out a little bit, thankfully. So I ended up painting a few things. I was trying to roll the paint on versus spraying it. Um, spraying is a whole lot faster if you can do it, but it uses a little bit more paint. So I just have to determine what you want. You'll end up seeing that I rolled and also sprayed it. So now I'm moving on to adding all of the trusses. Um, in between the ones that I had already set up. And so I'm making sure that they are lining up with my two by four wall supports. Um, so everything is coming down on a two by four, if that makes sense. It does take a little bit of time, but it's coming together and that's the best part about it. We're almost done. Now you could use joist hangers for this if you want to. I chose not to. Um, and also you can use that for your uh, roof purlins as well. I did that in my garden uh, shed, but for this one, I did not want to do that because it was kind of a pain. So I ended up, you'll notice that I'll put on um, roof purlins and I'll just set those on top of the other two by fours. So it runs um, opposite, it won't be flush, but you have to do whatever you like and whatever your project calls for. So it's personal preference really. Since this has ended up being pretty tall, I decided I'm just gonna spray the rest of the items because it was just so much faster. Oh my goodness. I wish I would have sprayed the entire thing um, to begin with, but you know, that's okay. Live and learn. Um, sometimes you just make things harder on yourself. Once that dried, uh, we ended up putting up the roof panels. This is the clear polycarbonate roofing here. Um, I bought eight foot sections and I ended up cutting off four inches of it for my pitch. Um, I have about five inches hanging off the edge. So do what works best for you. I filmed again um, and I can't find the footage. I have a feeling I deleted it or something, not sure. Um, so this is all I have of me putting up the roof panels. But let me tell you, making the wall seven and a half feet tall, I am up here really high and I don't like it. Uh, I don't think I'll ever do something this tall again, but I made the mistake of only making my garden shed six foot tall and I didn't like that. So 
I was determined to make sure this was tall enough to grow in and everything. So this is how it's looking. I think it looks pretty sleek. So I'm going to work on the base now. I took a 30, I think they're 38 inches or 39 inch roof panel and I cut that in half to make it go further. So I'm using black. I don't know why they don't make it um, black on both sides. I don't know. I think it's to help maybe reflect light or something. And, and this is also for snow. I thought this would be a better way to keeping the snow out and everything as well. But it also saved me quite a bit of money, a couple hundred dollars doing metal on the bottom versus doing eight foot panels of the clear roofing on the sides. So now I'm attaching the Z channel. And if you watched my garden green, um, my garden shed build, then you've seen some of this before. Um, but everything gets easier as you do it. So this project went a lot easier because I had already built the shed. As you do more and more DIYs, they get easier as you go. Um, believe me, it's not always easy the first time you do things and that's okay. So I made sure that was level and then I continued to secure that and then I ended up adding the clear panels on the side. So I bought 12 foot sections of this. It's about 26 inches wide and it was cheaper to do that and split it in half than to buy the eight foot panels to cover this. So that is one way I saved money. Um, this stuff is not the cheapest, but hopefully it will stay clear for a couple years. I'm really hoping. I'd love to have glass one day, but that'll come in time. So I ended up running out of the Z channel um, for this. So I will attach that later on. That's why you can see a little bit of the wood and stuff, but not a big deal to add on. It just hopefully will come in a few days. But now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna create venting on the front. I ended up doing the panels. Um, I'm marking it here where it needs to fit so that I can cut it. Um, and then we can create an opening window, if that makes sense. So I'm using these metal shears. These things work great. They work on metal and they also work on the plastic and it actually gives a cleaner cut than um, cutting it with the circular saw backwards. Um, with the blade backwards, see how clean that is besides my Sharpie. And then the other one creates this like white stuff from it melting. I have to kind of rub that off. But you can see here, the one side is up further because that one's not opening. Okay, so that's going all the way up to the, to the roof. And this one, I put a board here on the bottom that does not go the full length because I need it to open and not hit the wall support. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just drilling first and then screwing in my metal screws here and we'll attach the other black piece up there to the actual wall. So I'm using these small little hinges here and then this lid support is what I'm using to open the window. Just make sure when you attach your hinges, you make sure that they're gonna go the way that you want the window to open. those clouds beautiful oh I just love seeing the clouds move like that So now that we have that top hinge all secured, now we're going to take that um, piece that we cut earlier and we're going to attach it to the one that moves, okay? 
and uh, you can do it just like every other and see it opens. So now that it opens, we're going to attach that lid support and that will keep the window open during the day and let the heat out um, because heat rises. So I thought this would be the best spot for it. Um, and then it will just push out and then I can pull it back in. I did buy some little eye hooks um, to clamp it shut so that when it is windy or it's storming, I can close the window and will stay closed. But these lid supports are pretty stiff. So I think they'll work really well. So I did one of those on each side. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I had planned on doing two double doors in there, but that probably wouldn't be the best. So I ended up just doing one door and it's pretty wide. It's around... 45 um, inches total because I had to put um, door supports on each side so that ate up a few inches and I'm going to be using my Craig jig for this making uh, pocket holes basically and so um, you do this to all the boards and it, you set it to a certain depth and everything and it will make a hole for you and then you use pocket screws or you could use regular screws too if you wanted to I use a mixture of both <laughs> do that to most of your boards anywhere you're going to be connecting it and so um, basically, it's just kind of like a puzzle piece. You screw it all together. Now, I thought about doing the door solid, but I wanted to make sure that it kind of just blended right in. So I cut down my panels um, to around 23 inches, I think, wide or something like that. That way they would still overlap, but I wouldn't have to cut it off the edge. And then I just made sure it was level. Now, I thought about using those little squiggly things there at the bottom, but it ended up raising it up. And this is actually sitting on the inside of the doorway, so I'm not worried about snow making it in. It doesn't bother me at all. You can do what works best for you. A lot of people like using that on the roof and everything, but I did not. I just make sure to screw in on the flat part of the panels. Now, I did not end up ordering enough of the Z channel that goes between the clear siding and the metal. So I will have to attach that later. But I got this black trim piece um, at Home Depot. They sell the um, black like accessories or trim pieces for it, but they don't sell the black roofing. It's kind of strange. I don't understand that. But whatever the case, I attached this on the edges. That way there's nothing sharp on there. And I did that on both ends and also on the top. But I think the door looks pretty good besides missing that one little piece. These are the hinges I ended up using to attach it. And the last part that I'll be doing is adding these black metal trim that I got from Home Depot as well, just to the edges because the plastic overlaps, but just so that it keeps water out completely. I wanted to add this and then I'll add um, the... Uh, roof trim as well once I finish doing the roof but taking off the rest of the labels and we are done the only thing left to do is add the left side with the ridge cap when that comes in but I am obsessed with it I think it looks fantastic once those other pieces come in it'll be completely finished and I could not be happier with it I think I am going to add some rain gutters here on the side just to preserve some rainwater and some barrels and things but I am so happy with the way it turned out I cannot wait to grow my plants in it. We have a very short growing season here between June to September if we're lucky. So this will just ensure that everything ripens and I can have a longer growing season with this greenhouse. Can't wait to extend it here soon. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends. And until next time, hope you have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank you for being, spending part of your day with me and I'll see you in the next one.